last May I got hit by a car and it was really bad and I'm going to try and condense some of what I've learned living in this gray area between dead and okay. So um, what actually happened to me was I was minding my own business in a crosswalk and I got taken out by a car that was going about 40 miles an hour. I was airborne, I went through the windshield with my head, I fractured my skull and shattered the windshield in the process. So yeah, so of course, um, I went to the hospital and I got tons of scans to check on my organs and my bones and when I wasn't hemorrhaging and I wasn't dying, they sent me home. And so I did what I do in school and I went to class. So I like crutched my way to class and I had fractures and braces and bruises and swelling and this nuclear sized headache and I wasn't making any sense when I talked and I couldn't read any words on the page and my professor took one look at me and sent me home. So um, I came home home. I came all the way back to Colorado and I dropped out of my master's classes and I figured if I'm not making any sense and I can't read, how the F am I supposed to be a doctor? So when I got the traumatic brain injury diagnosis, I was actually really relieved. Um, and so I'm gonna geek out on the science for a second because this is a metabolic injury. Um, what happens is the little bridge that takes the oxygen from your blood and takes it to your brain gets broken and your brain needs oxygen to operate. So the little molecular bridge gets busted because when you're the shock wave that hits your skull and actually cracks it, travels through your brain, it's like a tsunami and it completely screws up this entire system going on in your brain. And so you can actually see it. What happens is you're, normally your brain's super active just to figure out what reality's like and tell you what's around you. And with this injury, you've got less capacity for lights, for people, for sound, and for things that you would normally take for granted. You've only got one gear, like you're not going anywhere. For me, I, like, I would black out doing really simple things like emptying the dishwasher, cup goes in cupboard, would completely take out my entire visual system and I couldn't see. So in your brain, like speed is everything and you process a coherent thought at 300 milliseconds. And if you get that slowed down to 400 milliseconds, you're senile and your thoughts aren't based in reality anymore. So um, to get better from this, I basically had to simulate a coma for three months. And I spent three months in bed with my, eye cl my eyes closed in a dimly lit room with earplugs in, trying to just like let my brain sleep and rest. And after the summer in bed, I was like looking not so banged up anymore, but um, I definitely wasn't myself. So I had to make this really tough decision not to go back to medical school and let my brain totally heal. And my boyfriend thought I was a total wimp. And so he dumped me over this. Oh. <laughs> And I just remember that I really wish there was a way for me to show people what I was feeling and how difficult it was for me to just have a conversation. And I used to say I wish I could turn green because then people could actually see that there was something wrong. And you should all care because we all have brains and our brains are the very root of who we are. They're the seat of our human experience. They are how we think, they're our personality, they're how we communicate, and they're how we relate to other people. And our brains are actually amazing because they're amazing for the reality that we can, we can appreciate. And they're also amazing for the behind the scenes actions like healing and reestablishing neural connections and actually going around and reestablishing that little metabolism after the tsunami hits. <laughs> so um, I like to say that it took all the king's horses and all the king's men to put Humpty Dumpty back together again because I've had so many care providers through this thing, it's like a village to just like keep me together and put me back on the right track. Um, and as scary as this is, you're pretty likely to encounter someone with this injury because you've basically already met me and one of these injuries happens every 15 seconds. And so, especially in Boulder where we like fling ourselves around on bikes and skis and snowboards, like your friend is likely to come to you and be like, dude, I totally endoed last weekend and land on my head and you think to yourself, ah, oh, that girl with the broken head and that really sucked for her. And then look at your friend and be like, maybe you should get evaluated and get checked out. Because when we face a crisis in our life, like getting run over by a car in medical school, our friends, <laughs> yeah, our friends and our family are critical to whether or not we can actually recover our life. And this is where it's true for brain injury or anything else that gets filed under life-changing events. So I hope you guys can just take a second and be empathetic with people when they're going through some sort of huge crisis 
And if you need any tips at all, like I would love to give you a hint about brain injury or otherwise. Thanks.